It doesn't matter how many links you have, if everyone lands on your site and you're ranking number one and they click the back button, it tells Google this site sucks and they yep. should rank it lower. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. We are backstage at AdCon 2023, where we've just had Neil Patel headlining the event, and we have decided to produce a little bit of content backstage, which is selfishly for me, and I think you're gonna learn a lot from it. We have scaled our coaching business to half a million a month with paid advertising. Neil is the master at Google SEO. You've been doing this for now, how long? Ooh, almost 22 years-ish or so. Okay, perfect. So I've got some questions because I need to extract 22 years worth of knowledge <laughs> from Neil's brain so that we as a company can implement some Google SEO stuff so we can get more traffic because where I see the game going is that paid ads are only getting more expensive. They're only getting more difficult. They're still in something of a golden, you know, a few golden years, but it's not getting any cheaper, right? Paid it's traffic. It's not getting any cheaper. But there, I think there'll be a way to make money from paid ads for a very, very, very long time. Yeah. Um, just like SEO, SEO was much easier 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. It still works today, it's harder, it takes more time, but it still produces results, just like paid advertising. Yeah. Because you learn more over the years, just like with paid ads, you learn how to optimize your conversions, or your funnels, or upsell and downsell, and all yeah. these things help you get a better ROI over time. And, and new platforms are gonna yeah. keep emerging, we take the same skills over. So. So totally agree, but I also want to add in the organic side of things, which we're not focusing on at all. And I want to have that leverage as well. And Google traffic is so valuable, but yep. it's a little bit harder to get and takes a little bit longer. So we're going to dive straight in. So where we're at, Neil, is we have done pretty much nothing with Google SEO for 10 years. Fresh as a, as a bean, and, okay. uh, and we need your help. So. What would be your starting point for us? We're, we are a marketing education company. We're really good at what we do. We focus on teaching YouTube ads and webinars and teaching coaches how to get high ticket clients. And um, what, would be, what, would be, what would you say is our starting point to get on, on Google? So the starting point is it's really hard to rank a website without content. And you probably have a ton of content from these events. Video content's not bad, but let's focus on text-based content. Okay. Because typically, whenever you do a Google search, Yes, videos can rank, but it's mainly text-based websites that you're landing on to. So the first thing you'd want to do is give away the farm. And what I mean by give away the farm is think about everything that you're charging for, educate people through text-based blog posts, and give that away on your website. No joke. Okay, right. So, so we have a $10,000 coaching. And included in that is a, a training program with a bunch of modules, a bunch of lessons. So how much of that, what percentage of that, or, or pretty much type all of that up and put it across lots of different articles, break it up? Correct, so you type up the majority of it, whatever that is, 80%, 70%, 50%, okay. break it up into a lot of different articles and put it on the web. And it could be a variation of it, right? It doesn't have to be yep. the exact thing, but you wanna give away your most valuable content for free if you're looking to rank. Okay, got it. So how will I know um, which topics from within my training, my valuable content, are going to pull well or, or not? Sure. So you have uh, we have free tools like Uber Suggest. You can end up typing in any keywords like uh, um, coaching or consulting or anything like that, and you're going to get more specific. Those one-word phrases are too generic. But like when you're in coaching, what do you guys help with specifically with coaching? It, it's, re it's a really, it's a, th it's a three-pronged approach. So it's people that have a high ticket offer, they may need help restructuring that offer. It's actually the session I just got off finishing yeah. now. So I was teaching something called the offer triangle, where we have client results at the top, we have lifestyle next to that, and we have scalability next to that. So you've got to have an offer that can satisfy those yeah. three things. So it's offer creation, it's a webinar that's gonna get people from, uh, I call this the conversion timeline. They're at a zero, they have no idea who you are. Yeah, to and buying. at 10 to buying. We wanna get them up to a six or a seven before we get them on the phone. Webinar does that, YouTube traffic to, uh, to, to flood the whole system. And <clears throat> right now, if I had to sum it up, it's like you guys do high ticket coaching. Yep. Is that correct? Yes. So you would go to Ubersess and you type in keywords like high ticket coaching. It'll tell you the popularity of that term. Plus, it'll give you thousands and thousands and thousands of other suggestions. It would give you variations of high-ticket coaching as well as other long-term variations of it. 
So now you have a list of a ton of keywords within your industry that people are searching for. Look for the ones with high search volume because that means people are searching for them on a monthly basis. And look for the ones that have a high CPC. You do paid ads, yeah. CPC is cost yeah. per click. Typically the higher CPC, that means the better that keyword is is because people are getting more conversions. Right. So what you want to do is then create content around those keywords, assuming it's relevant to the products and the services you're offering. And Got you'd it. want to put that up on the internet. That's the first step. Okay, so a few questions now, so I'm wondering where to go next because um, we're talking about finding high value keywords with, yeah. a, with, a, with a high CPC, surely they're more competitive. So if I'm not a brand new, new site, no? No, a lot of those aren't necessarily more competitive. Okay. In many cases they are, but in some cases they're not. And with Ubersuggest, you can put in your domain name and it'll tell you out of the list of keywords, it'll filter the ones that you have the highest probability of ranking for right now based on what you've done so far. Okay, that makes sense. So would I be picking a, a combination of what I would deem high value keywords versus low hanging fruit keywords? Yes. Okay. And the app will sort the low hanging keywords for you first. Okay. Once you put in your domain name. Uh, so then you would create text based content yep. and put those blog posts on your website. Yep. You could use things like ChatGPT and BARD or the Ubersys AI writer, mm. but you still want a human to modify the content. Your content yeah. needs to have E. What that stands for is experience, expertise, authority, and trust. And Google breaks that down. They want your content to be unique and it to stand out. They don't want it to be regurgitated information that can already be found on the web. Okay. So if you can end up creating really, really unique content that stands out and is super helpful, it's more likely to rank. Okay and you just publish it on your blog, on your website. And then what you'll need to do is, A, you need to get some social shares to your article, so share it on your social profiles. Okay. And you can also reach out to other people who share similar content on Twitter and other social networks and ask them to share content and maybe you reciprocate and share their content. Okay. And then B, you need to get links. Links are one website linking to your website. Yeah. Without other people linking to your website, you're not gonna rank as well. Okay. So in Uber Suggest, there's a report called the Backlink Opportunity Report. So you'd put in a few of your competitors. If you don't know your competitors, just Google the terms you're trying to rank for. You'll see yeah. who's at the top. And you'll put in your domain name and a few of your competitors. Yep. And in this Backlink Opportunity Report, you first start off with your own domain name. And then when you put in your competitors, because it'll tell you who at, it'll give you boxes for your competitors. It'll show you everyone who's linking to your competitors, but not you. See, if someone links to one of your competitors, they may be biased and they may like them and they may not link to you. Yep. If someone links to two, three of your competitors, the chances are they're, they like your industry, yep. they don't care about a specific competitor, and they're open to right. linking anyone in your space. You'd head up okay. those sites and talk to them about how you have better content, more thorough, and they're already linking to a few, how, they can get to, how you can get them to link to you and why it provides more value. And over time, you'll build some links. Okay. And what you'll find in this process is you'll start ranking higher. Okay. Now there's some on-page SEO issues that most sites have. In the Ubersess report, there's also a site audit report. You put in your URL, it tells you all the basic stuff you need to fix. Yep. So that way you can rank higher from a code perspective. At this point, you just do this. You create at least three articles a week. You do this for a year. You'll start okay. seeing some really good traffic. What you'll notice though is as you get more traffic, you may not get more conversions. So just like how you take someone from zero to 10, you gotta warm them up. Someone may read your blog and they mm. may be at a two. Yep. And now they're at their two, you may in, within that blog post wanna collect their email address. Okay, from an exit intent, or you could do, hey, join this webinar. And you're starting to warm people up so you can get them from a two to maybe a six. And then they're more likely to be ready to get on the phone and talk to yeah. someone. Okay. So let's just come back to, to backlinks then, because that's one of the things on my list to, to ask you about. Because back 10 years ago, I used to do a little bit of Google SEO, and it was really easy 10 years ago. We would just go to Fiverr and just buy a bunch <laughs> of backlinks, and it actually, it, it actually worked. I'm aware that that's far from the truth now. Yeah. What you've just described is very helpful, but sounds very manual. Is there any way to automate this, leverage my time better than reaching out manually to all these different competitor sites? Uh, no, there isn't. Okay. You have to just create amazing content, reach out to them, get links. Okay. There are some other ways you can generate links, like you can create infographics. People are more likely to link to infographics from what we see. 
Uh, you can use Canva okay. to create them. Uh, infographic is just a visual that breaks down yeah. the story you're trying to tell. You can also create free tools. They're easier to generate links to. Uh, and, and what and I mean... So, sorry to interrupt. Just before we move on, infographic, that's something I would just embed into the blog post. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. With any kind of SEO benefits in the way that I'm... Uh, just embed to the blog post. Just literally... People like it, they'll link to it. Okay. And then free tools. You can do... it. You know, I don't know the coaching space too well, but like if I'm in fitness, uh, BMI mass calculator, body mass index calculator, uh, Chat GPT was able to create the game Pong in less than 60 seconds, so you can have it create yeah. almost any tool for you. You can also use sites like Code Canyon to buy tools that you can white label and put on your site for like under 100 bucks, maybe 50 bucks. Okay. And these tools over time will help build links as well. Okay, that's good to know. You just got to find tools within your space, but on sites like Code Canyon, there's tools in almost every space. Okay, so so what I'm hearing, and I want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly, is now the game is we want high value backlinks, but perhaps less of them than just trying to get thousands and thousands of backlinks just for the sake of having a backlink. Is that am I understanding that right? Ideally, we, high value and quantity. Okay, but high value quantity. Okay. And if you can't get that high value, is fine. Relevant sites linking to you. Mm. You don't want Neil Patel linking to you when you're in coaching. Yeah. You may want another coaching site linking to you. Uh, okay. Or you may want a CNBC or Bloomberg website linking to you that's breaking down how people are making a lot of money through coaching and it's an up-and-coming industry. Right. I'm making it up. Maybe they would write about that. Maybe they wouldn't. Okay. But that's the kind of stuff that you want. And you'll get that over time. You just mm. got to do it often enough, create enough content, add enough value, and people link to you. Okay. This is like a conference. If you give <laughs> content, are people going to come back next year? <laughs> nope. No, and excuse my language, but yeah. uh, it's the same with the internet. If you create good content, people will come back, they'll be loyal, they'll give you their email address, they're more likely to convert, they'll yeah. link to you, they'll share your content, all that stuff. Okay. So, so we used to, again, back 10 years ago, we used to prioritize things like getting a backlink from a government website or an education website and things still like that. Still helps. Okay, still but relevant. it doesn't matter too much. You just want to create good content. <clears throat> okay, all right. So how many backlinks would I be expecting to generate over what period of time? And then when would it really start to kick in? Don't worry the about the number. It'll okay. be slow and steady. You may trickle in and get a few a week. But after okay. doing it for a year, your few a week may turn into five or ten a week. Okay. And it just adds up over time. Okay. You don't need quantity to rank. You just need quality content that's amazing, the best user experience. Put the user first, do what's best for them, yeah. and then the longer you should start ranking higher and higher, assuming you're doing the other factors like we mentioned. Okay. So, so if I did want to, you know, I'm hearing this has got to be a manual process. We need to be reaching out, yes. building a bit of a relationship with those other sites. Um, can I still leverage my time by just hiring a VA to do that? Would you trust someone to be... Not a VA, someone who has a little bit more experience, who mm. specializes in it, they're going to have much more success than a VA. Okay. Just because of their knowledge of yeah, those Yeah, maybe they've sent out enough emails for link building so they know, you know what has a better success rate, mm. uh, they know what kind of content converts better, things like that. Okay. VA has to learn it all from scratch. Okay. So we'll move to the content itself in a minute, the text that we're actually putting in there and how long and things like that. But before we move on from linking, outside of that, outside of the backlinks, are there any other factors that we want to incorporate in our article that helps rank in terms of, we talked about finding some keywords, some high value ones, competitive Naturally, ones. Naturally, you'll have the keywords in the article without forcing it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And you don't need to emphasize on how many times or anything like that, just whatever is natural. Uh, but you got the main factors on page, yeah. which yeah. we talked about the site auto report will help. Yeah. Backlinks and content. Those are the main three areas. So it's so interesting because back when we used to do it, it, it seems so artificial to me now. But the way we used to do it is bolding certain words and, yeah. and underlining certain things and putting a certain thing in the, in, in the header text and things like this. So, so that truly, that's matter. all not very relevant anymore. Uh, n nowhere near the other main three factors. Because look, at the end of the day, when you're reading an article, do you really care if a word is bolded? You care if it provides the best experience. Mm. If it doesn't, you're going to click the back button and go on to the next article. It mm. doesn't matter how many links you have. If everyone lands on your site and you're ranking number one, and they click the back button, it tells Google this site sucks and they yep. should rank it lower. Got it. Okay. This is really, really interesting and also helpful.